So a 500-year anniversary, pretty exciting. I want to explain a little bit more about this 500-year anniversary uh, because uh, you may be new to Lutherans or, you know, kind of not know your church history a little bit. So I want to explain this. So in the late 1400s and early 1500s, there lived a man named Martin Luther. He was studying in, in Germany to be a lawyer and uh, he was caught in a lightning storm. And in the midst of that, made a promise that had he survived, which he did, he would become a monk. So that is what he did. He became a monk. Uh, he studied and continued and became a pastor, uh, ultimately a doctor and a professor. In the course of that experience, he read for the first time, Bibles were very rare than hand copies, he read for the first time the Bible. And as he read, what he saw and learned and grew in his faith for himself, he realized that the rest of the church did not know and saw places that the church needed to reform. That historical event is known as the Reformation. So on October 31st, uh, 1517, he, tradition has it nailed to the church door. We now think might be more likely he waxed it to the church door to uh, leave holes not in the church door. But for whatever, he definitely shared 95 theses. A thesis is a, is a plural of a thesis. You may have heard like of a doctoral thesis. One idea, well he had 95 ideas about how the church needed to reform and change. Again, that date was October 31st, 1517, so hence we're at the 500-year anniversary of that event. What that ultimately ended up doing, his goal was to reform, to improve the church, but it ended up splitting the church, and the whole Protestant branch of Christianity was formed, and in fact, many of those reforms did go on and reform the Roman Catholic branch of Christianity as well. So... I wonder if you can kind of imagine some of what that was like for Luther. I tried to capture whole pieces of that uh, in a message series that I did this summer called Lutheran Foundations. I, I went and uh, broke up uh, all the kind of different things that Luther taught and encouraged. And uh, so uh, throughout the, the summer, I talked about uh, the life of Martin Luther. I uh, did another message on uh, the primacy of Scripture, how Luther was guided by the Bible. Um, then myself and other guest preachers, there was one on law and gospel, another on justification by grace through faith, that we are made right with God by the free gift of God's love. Nothing we can do to earn it or deserve it. We simply claim it by faith. Now, another week that was simultaneously saint and sinner, um, how each of us is saint and sinner talked about how Luther uh, started leading worship in the common language so that folks would understand, as well as translating the Bible into the common language. Uh, two kingdoms we talked about, the priesthood of all believers, that uh, each of us is gifted and can be used by God. And we ended with the small catechism, Luther's educational material for folks to grow in faith. Uh, by the way, if you missed any or all of those messages this summer, you can uh, listen to them on uh, my blog, StuartLoose.com, um, and kind of learn about those Lutheran foundations. Now, I'm sure some of you, this has been keeping you up at night, you've been thinking, well, Pastor Stuart shared all about this this summer. What is he going to preach on on Reformation Day? I know that's been keeping you up. You've been worried about that, going, he, he gave it all away already. What, what is left? I did save one topic that I want to focus on this morning. And some of you who are smart figured this out already this morning. We've been talking about her when you got the card on the, the back table. I want to talk about reforming. At the heart of the Reformation, at the heart of what happened in Luther's life and then what he shared with others and went on to change the, the church was the idea of reforming that we need to keep on reforming. I want to break that apart and think about that a little bit. But I wonder if for a moment you can imagine Martin Luther reading the Scriptures for the first time 
and then comparing what he is reading there with his own sense of faith and what he had been taught and what the, the church was experiencing. He might have read passages like this one I want to read to you from 2 Corinthians. Um, and I think these passages changed and transformed his sense of faith. They reformed him. So in 2 Corinthians, Paul writes to the church in Corinth, from now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. He's talking about our individual lives, but he says we don't see them anymore from a human point of view. We see them from God's point of view. Even though we once saw Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in this way. We, we see what God was doing in Jesus, and that helps us see others differently. He goes on to say, so if anyone is in Christ, if anyone follows Jesus, if anyone has Jesus as a part of their lives, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. We are transformed. We are reformed by our relationship with Jesus. He goes on to say, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. What Jesus did for us brought us in relationship and connection uh, with God through Jesus and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We get to share with others what has been given to us, he encourages. That is, and he kind of repeats himself in a slightly different way, that is in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. He basically repeats it to emphasize this new relationship we have with God and the opportunity to share this with others. He gives that a new metaphor. He says, so we are ambassadors for Christ. We get to, to share Christ and represent Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, Jesus, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That was a favorite phrase of Luther's of how we are in right relationship with God. But I love that core central idea in the center there. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. We are changed and transformed, reformed. Everything old has passed away. See, everything is new. When that happens in our lives, when we let God reform us, that changes our families, that changes our community, changes our workplace, it changes our church. We need to keep on reforming. I want to break that apart and spend a little bit of time with that and talk about how that happened for Luther and how that happened for us as well, that we can keep on reforming. Well, the first thing that Luther did was he sought God's direction. He, he read the scriptures and he saw in them a faith that he didn't have, a, a different perspective, and he saw that of the world around him as well. To seek God's will. That means for each and every one of us, perhaps it is to read in scriptures and what we read there transforms and reforms us. Or it might be in our prayer life that we listen for God of what changes need to happen in us. I was at a conference just the other day, and the, the one pastor was sharing that at one point in his ministry, he felt like he was at a, a dead end. He thought maybe it was time to leave that church. Uh, and in a time of, of deep prayer, he heard God say to him, stop whining, you're sharp, fix this. That sounds like God's word. Just kind of stop whining. You're sharp. Fix this. And he went about doing that. He had to first seek God's will. First, we have to listen for that voice as Luther listened in Scripture. And then we need to be brave. Um, 
We need to be bold. We need to be courageous. I showed you that scene earlier. I, I, I can hardly imagine what that would have been like for Luther to stand in front of the greatest leaders of his day and say, this is what I see. This is what God has shown me in the scripture. I cannot turn my back on that. Sometimes it requires a boldness and a bravery from us as well. That what we see God leading us to, that we have the courage to move ahead in this. It is not easy. It is challenging. I, I was with one of our growth groups earlier this week, and we were talking about people's language. And sometimes to, to say out loud to someone, I, 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 I don't appreciate that language. Or, or you're saying that about my best friend Jesus, and I wish you wouldn't use it that way. Um, but that boldness, that, that bravery to step up. I remember an instance where I, I felt some of that same bravery myself. Um, when I first became a, a pastor, the call committee chairman of that church, he and I became good friends. I was about the age of his children, and I, I spent a lot of time at their house. Uh, Memorial Day, Labor Day, we were far away from family, and so we hung out with his kids a lot. And I remember at about the year mark, as we did here at, at St. Paul's, we had like a pastor parish review. And Roger, my call committee chairman, said in that review, now, pastor, I want you to be careful. It isn't only what you say, but how you live, your character, that makes a difference to the people in this church. A couple weeks later, I was with Roger in his living room, just the two of us, and I really didn't want to ask it took a lot of bravery because I was afraid of what he was going to say, but I knew I needed an answer. I said, Roger, what you said at, at my review, I spend a lot of time at your house. Is there anything in my character that I need to transform? He went on to say, no. He didn't see anything specific. But he went on to share that there were numerous pastors in that church in the past, maybe not numerous, a few, but that they had ruined their, their ministry um, and their witness by their actions. And that I always needed to be careful about how I lived. I've always kept that with me, but I wouldn't have had that word of wisdom from Roger without the bravery to ask. And then... We need to act on it. Luther found this new discovery and, and knew some things that the churches needed to change, and he had the bravery. Um, but even though where that led was not where he wanted to have led. He didn't want to split the church. He just wanted to improve it. But he, he acted upon what he experienced. And we need to do that as well. It isn't enough just to see the difference in our own life, but we need to, to make that happen. And I've seen that happen again and again with folks where they're reading scripture and they realize there's something that they need to change in their life. I've seen folks who um, stop smoking because they realize that was something or, or have quit drugs and alcohol. I know a young man who is literally changing his language, his behavior, because Jesus has got a hold of his heart. And he's changing the things that need to change in his life. I know a young man who, uh, when he started to discover his spiritual gifts, left business where he'd kind of accidentally fallen into it and went to become a teacher to go and transform himself and the students that he interacted with because he was willing to make the changes that he felt God was pointing him toward. And that applies to our church as well. Let me go ahead and end with this story. A number of years ago, I was at a group of church leaders, uh, both pastors and lay people, and my bishop at the time was leading that, that meeting, and he was in a very feisty mood. He was toward the end of his term as bishop. He was retiring, and I think he felt like he had nothing to lose, so he was kind of really challenging the churches to go in new ways, to, to try new things, to experiment. It was back in a day, I remember him mentioning contemporary worship, and that was a day when some churches were doing that, but others were resistant. And I remember a guy standing up um, and challenging the bishop. 
And the guy said, but, but Bishop, that stuff isn't Lutheran. And I had had enough. I stood up and I said, with all due respect, we're Lutheran. We change things. We reform. We do new things. It's, we were birthed in the idea of being, doing something new and trying new things and heading in new directions. It's eminently Lutheran to try new things and go in new places. Reforming should be in our DNA. I'm not sure I won any friends that day. And I pointed out to them that this is our heart. This is where the Lutheran church was born from. This idea of make it better, reform things, keep on changing, keep on reforming.